Hey guys, more Bleaky here and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how we can create a player health script with a health bar and I'm going to show you how we would go about damaging the player and taking some of that health away. So make sure to like, subscribe and let's get started. So what you can see in this scene we have right now is a main camera, a player and two platforms and if we hit play, this is all that happens. We've just got a little player and he can move left and right and he can jump. We don't have any health or anything like that so let's make a start on that. So making a player health script is actually very, very simple. And I'm gonna show you how to do that and then we're gonna expand upon it later in the video. So I'm gonna click on my player here. I'm gonna press add component and I'm gonna type in player health. We're gonna create and add a new script. And we're gonna open this up in Visual Studio. Now in this script, what we're gonna do, we are gonna create a public float for health. And without a health bar, this is really the only float you need. You could just access this float from other scripts and remove it if the player collides with an enemy, for example, or walks on spikes or something like that. But to use a health bar, we're gonna take this one step further. We're gonna need a second float for max health. So we're gonna say public float max health. And then whatever we set our health to, we want our max health to be there at the start of the game as well. So we can set our max health in the start function equal to our health at the start of the game. Now, before we write the next bit of script, we need to create something back in Unity so we can understand the script we're about to write. What we need is to actually create the health bar and we're going to do this using a canvas in Unity. So I'm going to right click in our hierarchy here. I'm going to go to UI and we're just going to click image and it will automatically create an image as a child object of a canvas. It will also create an event system, but we don't need to worry about that. Call your image health bar. And now if we press F, it will zoom out a little bit. Or even if we click on our canvas and press F, it will zoom right out to our canvas. If you can't see anything, make sure to click on this gizmos button at the top and it will therefore show it. Now what we're gonna do, I like having my health bars in the top left. So I'm gonna grab our health bar and I'm just gonna move it around up here. Now we're gonna make him a little bit shorter, just a little bit fatter like that. And now if I hit the game tab, we've got a nice little health bar that we can see, but it does look a little bit bland. So we're gonna spice it up just a little bit with a different color. And if we left it like this right now, nothing would happen, even if we wrote the script because it has no image. Now, if you're gonna make a proper game, you might wanna use Photoshop or Acebrite or some sort of art software to make one. But for now, I'm gonna click on this side view button and I'm just gonna type in square. And we're gonna use Unity's default square sprite. And now we need to set this image so it is fillable. As the player's health is taken away, it will slowly move away with it. Because at the moment, this is just a static image. What we're gonna do, we're gonna check this image type variable here and we're gonna change it from simple to filled. And now there's multiple options you could choose from here. You might want a health bar that is radial and that works like this. Obviously with a, a rectangular bar, this does not work the best. So of course we are gonna change that to horizontal for us. And now, as you can see, it fills from right to left. If you really wanted, we could have it vertical as well, but for now, I'm gonna keep it for horizontal. Now, back in our script, we need to reference our image. And to do that, we need to use a new namespace at the top. So we're gonna use Unity Engine dot UI because now we're accessing UI elements. I'm going to create a new variable for our image. So I'm going to go public image and we will just call this health bar. Now in our update function, because we want this to update every frame, we're going to access our health bar that we just made. I'm going to access the fill amount and we're going to set this to a function called mathf.clamp, which we're essentially going to use to restrict the fill amount to the health and max health as a minimum and maximum value. And we're going to clamp this between zero and one. So if the health is at 100, then the bar will be at 100. If it's at 50, it'll be at half health and so on. It will never go above this value. So we're gonna use health for the first value and a forward slash. And then we're gonna use our max health. And then we're just gonna clamp this between zero and one. Back in Unity, make sure to click on your player. I'm gonna drag our health bar image into the image slot we've got here. So it knows what we're using. And before we hit play, we're just gonna set our health to let's say 100. And now if we hit play, you can see for a start, our max health goes straight to our original health that we want. And if I drag this health down, you can see that the bar slowly shrinks. And you can see if we go above 100, it is clamped, so it will not go any higher. You could write a script in your game to prevent this, for example, that if the player health goes above 100, to set it to the max health. This is something I've actually done in my game, Halls of Perished, which you can check out on my main channel. So now that's great. We've got player health and we've got him a health bar. But what can we do with this? How can we give access different scripts so we can use enemies and damage variables to help damage our player? What I'm gonna show you 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to create an empty object as a damage object. We're just going to call this spike. Pretend it's a spike. It's most definitely not. It's going to be a nice red square, but it will do the job. I'm going to do the same as I just did. I'm going to use a square and we're just going to drag this all the way to red. I'm going to zero this out on all the axes. I'm going to press F to focus in on it. I'm going to shrink it down just a little bit, just for my preference. And I'm just going to leave it here. And then finally, I'll put a box collider 2D on it. Now, if I click on the game view, you can see we've got a little red square. And what I'm going to do with this red square, I'm going to make a enemy health script. So I'm just going to type in damage and we're going to create a new script from this. Now, there is many different ways we could access the player's health now. A very simple way of doing it is simply calling it from the inspector. However, if you have many enemies, this may not be the best method. In terms of simplicity though, and showing you guys a very simple method of doing this, I'm gonna do this for now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go public, and then I'm gonna reference the player health script we just made, the script itself. So we're gonna go public, player health, and we're just gonna call this P health, for player health. Now I'm gonna make an on collision enter script so we can trigger something when the player collides with this damage object. So I'm gonna go void on collision enter 2D. I'm gonna set the collision 2D to other. And then I'm gonna say if other dot game object dot compare tag is equal to player and then curly brackets. So if our player collides with this object, we are gonna reference our P health. And then inside this P health reference, we are going to access health. Now, before we do anything with this, I'm gonna create a brand new float. So I'm gonna say public float, and I'm gonna call it damage. I'm gonna take away that damage float from the health we just made. So if you put a minus and it equals after a variable, it's gonna take away whatever you put on the right side of it, and it's just gonna equal this variable at the same time. So essentially, we're taking away however much damage we set from the health, and then we're just gonna set that straight away. So essentially that's how you kind of alter variables within script. You either put plus or minus and then an equals after it. And the reason I've used a public variable here is because now we can easily access this within the inspector. And if we're doing too little damage or too much damage, we can very quickly change that without having to go back into the script. Now don't forget to add the tag player onto your player as well, otherwise that will not work. So make sure to add a tag if you don't have this player tag and then go back onto your game object and add it up here. Now, if we click on our spike here, we can just drag our player into the player health here and we can set the damage we do to, let's say 20. And now if I hit play and I walk into this object, you can see that I have some health taken away at the top there. And I can keep going every time I walk into this and take more damage until my health is at zero. And that is exactly what we want. And like I said, we can change this now in the inspector to, for, let's say five. And now all of a sudden this spike is absolutely worthless to us and does barely any damage. Or we can make it completely buffed and absolutely one tap us. I am going to show a different way of accessing this player health script. If you have very many enemies and you don't want to keep referencing our player health script in the inspector, I'm going to get rid of this and I'm actually going to use our collision here. I'm going to go other dot game object dot get component. I'm using this other game object. So if our player collides with this object, we're going to get a component of the player game object. And the game object we're going to reference, you can probably tell, is exactly the same as what we had before. It is the player health. Now we're going to do brackets inside and out. So now we're at the same point we was before. We've just used a different method to access the player health scripts, but they both work. So it's whatever works for you. But now from this, what we're going to do, we're going to reference the health. I'm going to do exactly what we did before, minus equals damage. And this should work exactly the same. And now if you use this method, you won't actually need this variable at all. And just to prove it, with this altered script, it works exactly the same. We still take damage. We've just used a different, arguably easier method to access our player health script. One thing that is important to mention is that we need to click on our canvas and change our UI scale mode to scale with screen size. This means you have more control over how your game objects are positioned on different monitor resolutions and things like that. But these are settings for a different video. So make sure to just change this to scale with screen size and then click on your health bar and reposition it to the top left or whatever you want it for your game. And now the last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna head to our player health script. I'm just gonna have our player be destroyed when his health hits to zero. So I'm gonna go if health is smaller or equal to zero, we're gonna use the destroy function 
and we're just going to use game object. So if the health is zero or smaller than zero, we're basically going to kill our player. Now, in many games, you might want to use a coroutine to set a little cutscene and have a scene transition before players restarted or just have the scene restart. That is where you would place it right here. But for now, we're just going to destroy him because I'm, I'm going to say this like that. And now if I walk into this a couple times, you should see our player disappear, which is pretty much exactly what we want. Our player is dead and we have a very functional health bar, a way to damage that health bar and just an overall working player health script. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it was helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.